so cold, winter afternoons can be the perfect time to pull out the art supplies. So today we're sharing one way to push your boundaries when it comes to paint. Not a wall canvas for the living room, but maybe something you can tack on the fridge or even tuck in a journal. It's day one of Winter Day Paint Play. Here on Studio 5, professional artist Natalie Malin is joining me with an art exercise that I think you'll really like. So first, my first question, what is the benefit of paint play or freestyling, if you will? There's so many benefits. The kids are using a lot of their senses, even taste if you're my two-year-old, but pretty much every <laughs> <laughs> else. They're using them. They're getting their hands into the paint. They're exploring color. We all know that art is really good. There's art therapy. There's mm -hmm. all those things you can do with kids to help build their confidence and help build their skills. You want to get those neurons firing in their little brains and help them um, get that hand-eye coordination for school, for preschool. It helps with writing. And just There's a, a lot. just a creative burst, right, for young minds and, and old so minds alike. Fun. It and was fun. so fun for me and it was so fun for them. We had a really great time doing it. So what technique are you showing today? Today we're going to be doing paint scraping okay so with paint scraping there are a couple different types of paint you can use with kids we used washable tempera for my little littles at home uh -huh. but if you have older kids I really love this acrylic paint I tried a couple different ones this was my favorite because it's not as watery okay it's a little bit more concentrated but it's still budget friendly so okay. you can pick this up at a craft store it's easy to use and you get really bright bright fun colors well the vibrant when you're of using this it art, I mean I said you might not want to hang it on your living room wall or you might I mean I you think might Putting yeah. that touch of whimsy and then having your kids' hands behind this creation. My kids are hanging it up on the walls See, for there sure. you go. What is the process with kids, though? How do you map it out so it's kid-friendly and yes. still fun for mom? And doesn't drive mom crazy, mm -hmm. right? First thing is, if you're going to use the acrylics, you want to wear an apron. So you'll want to use... You know, protect your tables, protect your surfaces. If you're using these, these are a little more difficult to get out of clothing. So if you're using little, little kids, I buy those smocks from Ikea. They have these awesome little smocks that come all the way down their arms, and they're super cheap. Okay. So okay. that's my favorite mom tip for keeping things clean. But if you're using the acrylics, I just make sure, I actually store mine upside down, mm -hmm. and I shake them up really well before I start. And if you want to do the technique, you can do one right Should here if you want. Should we apron up, Natalie? Yeah, let's, Should we apron speaking up? Speaking of aproning I up. mean, smock and cover the kids, and maybe smock and cover yeah. ourselves, right? I okay, and how it. many colors are at play with a piece like this, an art scrape, okay. a paint scrape like this? This is another good tip with your kids. You can look up a color wheel just online on the computer. My kids got a little bit frustrated the first day because everything was turning brown uh, when they were, because yeah. they're using it and they're just putting all kinds of colors. So we looked at the color wheel. If you're using colors across from each other, it's going to turn brown. So complementary colors will turn brown. Uh -huh. So if you help I them didn't pick. I did know that. Was no, I supposed to no, know that? I don't know. Hey, art school, right? Okay. So if you pick a couple colors next to each other on the color wheel, it'll look a lot prettier. So on this one, you can see there's oranges and yellows and blues and greens, and this has reds and orange. So those are colors next to each other. You mm -hmm. don't have to do that. I thought it was fun to let them play and make brown and black and see what they came up with first. Okay, okay. Then they were also a little open to listening to, no one wants to listen to mom, right? So They've got to learn it themselves sometimes. Yeah, and it's good. It's, they remember it now. So we're so. squirting and then scraping, or what's, yes. what do we do? So Teach me. The best part is you just want to put little tiny dots okay. in a whole bunch of little tiny dots I feel like makes the most. Do as I'm doing. I am just copying. And we did this. Natalie does. If she jumped <laughs> off a cliff right now, I would be right after her. Okay. Okay. So we we use different kinds of paper. Also, I really love the thicker watercolor paper. I'm using the Canson today because it's easy to find it. Lots of local Say it places. Again, the brand? Canson. It's Canson. a blue pad, and it okay. says XL. And it's watercolor paper. Okay. Thirty sheets. It's about. It's thick. Six bucks. And it's nice and thick, so it'll stay flat. We tried okay. a bunch of different kinds of paper, too. Mm -hmm. But this was my favorite. What other supplies do we have here? We have the paint. We have the paper. Yes. We have, what is this, cardboard? This is the back of the pad of paper. I just cut it up. Nice. You can use the paper, too, but because it's paper, it'll dissolve a little bit as uh -huh. you're going. So uh -huh. you kind of have to throw them away and start over. OK, OK. So we just cut up the back of the pad. What are and we so doing? And then, basically, I get really excited in moments like this. you're just going to start scraping around Oh, I page. love it already. I love it. All right, do I dare? Dare. Dare. It's super fun. And if you're the kids, you're going all over. Right. You can pre-cut your pages, too, or you can even print really cute little pages, little outlines on the back of the papers mm -hmm. before you do this, and mm -hmm. then they can cut it out. I like my kids to freehand draw, so mm -hmm. I just had them take a pencil on the back afterwards and cut things out, like this cute little gingerbread man or this monster. Or we also did, um, Penny did a Cinderella carriage. How do you know when to stop scraping? Whenever you think it's done. Really? Yep. 
and then you'll just let it dry. I'm gonna add a little bit more paint to the end of mine. I need some more purple. You can add some more. The kids the usually have a lot. It is the color of the year this we've year. Been, we've been saying, okay. It's on my list of things to love more is that cute violet. purple, yep. Uh, yeah. So there we go. So then you're just gonna let it dry. I like to get it pretty thin. After my kids did it, I came back through and kind of thinned out a couple areas. Like, nice job. Let me smooth Looks it good. over. Good. Let's just let it dry faster than Ooh, four days. How vibrant though and happy. So it's really fun. Yeah. And you just let it dry. So this is a good one to do kind of in two batches. You're gonna have them paint first, mm -hmm. and then you'll need time for it to dry. The acrylics dry really quickly. Okay. Because they don't have quite as much water and they have a lot more pigment. Uh huh. So again, that's another win for the deco art acrylics right here. Yes. Yes. Um, It'll dry pretty quickly. And then you can come through and start cutting. I really loved using my paper trimmer. Uh -huh. For my little kids, I made all kinds of fun little just shapes, kind of like blocks, yeah. and then had them arrange them into different houses and buildings. And they can use them over and over again, or they can glue them down. We used a bunch of punches too to make cute, fun shapes. What was the outcome of your art day with your kiddos? This is what I made. I, I kind of got into it and did a lot they of little built the house they built the house we built a little bird with these little fun tools i have these fun little tweezers and these super sharp scissors and punches sweet. that i used so i love sweet. these little and, and we, we're sets. kind of selling this as a kids art day yes but you have fun with this technique in your own right we do yeah i actually used this in a children's book um, my children's book is called My Name is Stardust. I'm the illustrator, it's and Doug beautiful. and Bailey Harris are the authors. I was just paging through. I mean, the color, the vibrancy, it's just stunning. It's so fun. You can use it in a lot of different ways. So I created all the textures, very similar technique, pretty much the same way, and then scanned them in and then used the computer to cut out the shapes and make fun little things. But it was paint scrape. Within. It was that technique, mm -hmm. that basic technique same that technique. led to the pages of that beautiful book. That is and exactly. And therapeutic for mom, right? Just it was to... so fun. It was such a fun project to do something a little bit different. Right. And... If you're using the computer a lot, it's really fun to get back into the paint. If you're using the paint a lot, it's fun to go and start creating right, shapes. Right. Oh, Natalie, so we thanks had a good so time. much for the inspiration. Quickly tell me about your art schedule for the coming year, 2018. I have a fabric line that comes out in March. Oh I'm very goodness. excited What's about that. What's the style? What's the feel? It is very watercolor florals. Of course. Of course. So it's you'll beautiful. love it. It's beautiful. And then I have some workshops coming up with Melissa Esplin. Where also can we look in the spring. For the schedule. On my Instagram or my blog. Okay, we'll link you from our website. Thank you so much.